The wave of information that's washed across the Arab world since the mid-90s has caused dramatic changes in the media landscape. Hundreds of satellite channels and a flourishing internet have given Arabs ample means to dodge censorship and have their say. Israeli journalists covering the Arab world see new opportunities for opening bridges. Well, there is tremendous curiosity, as I can see also through the social networks, uh, something that I've been exploring late, lately. Uh, also, as a user of uh, both Facebook and MySpace, I'm always surprised at the amount of... Uh, uh, people that are turning uh, that request to be my friends, for example, or just want to exchange information uh, about Israel as, as soon as they see Jerusalem as my hometown. So immediately, tons of questions. Uh, or even sometimes just to check out the information. Are you, do you really live there? People actually live there? How does it look like? But there are also attempts to stifle the newborn media. Regimes are trying to restrict satellite television and popular websites are frequently blocked in the Middle East. Could we already be witnessing the end of the golden age of information? We are not uh, no longer living in the 70s that somebody says something and you can block him. If you can block him, his, his brother will speak, his mother will talk to Al Jazeera in their mobile phone or his uncle will say it in the Facebook, which means there is no chance to block and the Arab uh, regimes, I'm talking about Egypt, uh, Jordan, even Saudi Arabia, studying how to join them instead of defeat them or abolish them. You can't take the plug for it. It's too late. But information is a double-edged sword. Internet and satellite television are also used by terrorist groups to propagate their ideas. With the vast amount of information on offer, it's up to consumers to decide how to fill their daily media intake.